What up, y'all? Welcome back to the City Podcast. This is the Stay In True To Yourself Podcast. And uh, we just talk about stuff here today. And um, it's more of a casual one. Sydney, you know, you've been on the podcast a few times already. Uh, it's great times, man. Good conversations. And uh, today we have another one. Um, and for all the listeners out there, just go make sure to subscribe, like, comment, share, whatever you want. If you want to be on the podcast, let us know. Uh, we got some good, good guests coming up soon. Um, so, yeah, Sydney, what's up, man? Hey, those of you who have watched this channel before, my name's <laughs> Sydney Adebayo. I fully believe in that mantra, staying true to yourself. Hell yes. In this journey called life, and I'm sure Tex is in agreement, in this journey called life, what you thought you knew turned out to be lies, and you have to really <laughs> find the truth, and that's what I try to do every single day. I'm not perfect. I've made my share of mistakes, but I'd like to think that I'm gaining an experience and knowledge and building on myself every single day trying to craft the best possible version of myself, and I hope everyone is doing the same. Me and uh, Tex go way back to Davis days, like he said, and I'm not going to say everything, of course, because what happens in <laughs> Vegas stays in Vegas, but here we are today after so many years. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure to have you back here, um, and it's just awesome to, to hear from you again, man. I remember the last mm -hmm. couple of times we recorded uh, the, the episodes, um, uh, Maybe like two years ago, maybe? I think so. It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. It was during COVID. I remember that for sure. So Right. Yeah, it's been a uh... fake nonsense called COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get it off, man. I know you got a lot you wanna share. You've been we've been talking a lot about these things, man. So what's your uh, what's your current thoughts, man, on what's currently going on right now in the world, man? It's the election season, bro, and uh yeah, man. So it's a lot going on. What's your thoughts on it? I mean, like you said, there's a lot going on, but we have to look beyond this whole Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump election, because I'll be real with you. It's all rigged. It's all being controlled by a certain group. And realistically speaking, no matter who wins, you're going to see more of the same. Now, obviously, I have my thoughts on who I would want to win. Donald Trump, obviously. But okay. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Donald Trump has been, you know, he's not the same Trump in 2016 that he is now. He has been bought to a degree. He's a better option than Kamala Harris, of course. That bitch, she Whoa. she shouldn't be anywhere okay. near the presidency, really. First, uh, let's let's not let's not address her as that man. You know, let's. Let's not uh let's not do that. You got a better um, you got a better term, my friend. You got a better term. It's it's she's still a woman, she's still a human being, so let's not be disrespectful to that, you know? Um it's funny because you have you seen the Obama recently, the um the speech he gave? Or it was a conversation he was uh, having and he said that uh, I guess the reason black men need to vote for uh Kamala <laughs> is because they are you know they're giving they're finding themselves reason to not vote for her cuz she's a woman um but i mean no. <laughs> to some extent i would like to know more I, I would like to know more of the context behind the whole conversation instead of just watching the clip but what's your thoughts behind that let's let's be clear here number 1 Kamala Harris ain't black she's indian Kamala, that's not a black name. Maybe one black girl name. That's an Indian name. It's Sanskrit, literally. <laughs> it means something in Sanskrit. So let's get that straight. Obama, he's half black. And honestly... He's Kenyan. I've let's lost make that a, clear. You know, it's Kenyan. I, yeah, but I've lost a lot of respect for Obama. I'm not going to lie to you. When I was a child and naive, I wanted him to win. I couldn't vote, but... Realistically speaking, who's doing the real nigga shit? It's Donald <laughs> J. Trump. Why is yeah, he why he's in why why are you doing that? We have to say what it is. There's no better term to call it than real nigga shit. Donald Trump is the OG that has started a massive rebellion towards this female garbage that we're getting, this female run society we're getting. He is literally leading a mass revolution and making America great again. 
But back to the subject, you know, what do I think of Obama's speech? First off, even if she was black, it doesn't mean you should vote for her. I personally don't want a woman to be the president. And here's why. Men are better at leading. Men are the leaders. We're supposed to be the head of the household. It says so in the Bible. Women are great people. They have a part to play in society, but they shouldn't be leading. That's a man's work. When women are leading, all you get is chaos and disorder. Kamala currently is the vice president. Let's be real. She's really the president. Biden can't lead anything. And all you see is disaster and destruction. Obama, you know, I hate to say it, but I've lost so much respect for Obama. I think he is an embarrassment. I think he should take a page from Donald Trump on what real nigga shit is so that when we finally have our first black president, we will see a massive change in how people view black people because we're a strong race. We are, but we're okay. being defined by women and bitches. And I'm, by bitches, I mean Obama this time. <laughs> First of all, let's just, I would like to get it clear out there to all the people listening out there. We do not condone such use of languages. You know, don't use that. This is just a man sharing his opinions and thoughts. But now, so I would like to know, why would you say that a woman leading the country is not the best thing compared to having a man lead the country? Because I've definitely heard and seen and heard of experiences um and in countries where women are the leaders of the country um and also i'll give you this as a fun fact name me you one know, name one name Tan one well first of all right now tanzania has a woman president i think um ethiopia is tanzania had a, a leading world power right hey now? look even though they probably look 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 they have amazing beaches they have uh, great culture <laughs> great tourism um, I don't think right, there's too right. much going on there, but it kind of provides that, you know, that opportunity. Ethiopia as well has, throughout I think, his, a woman. Throughout history, just... throughout history, men have always been the leaders. Look so at everything you... we have in this world. Men built it. So you okay? are more of a, pa you, you believe in the aspect of patriarchy. Patriarchy is how we've gotten to this point. Literally. But we look can't at get everything... into it without women, though, man. Come on now. We can't degrade them to, Bro, to anything less. Bro, look at everything less... we have. Everything in that room, she'll be one of them that was female created. Uh, you know what? I would, I would say, can I have a candle right there. Candles. That was built uh, by a man, bro. You know, we, I, I'm gonna go, let me Google this. Uh, that let me was Google built this. and designed by a man. Bro. How you know that? How you know that? Because everything in this world has been built and designed by men. <laughs> nah, man, I don't. I don't agree with that. Okay, you got to agree with. Look, this, look, bro. look, look. I just googled this. Computer programming is something that was done by women. Ada Ada Love, Lovelace wrote the first algorithm, making bro, her bro, bro. the first world's off, first computer... woman computer programmer. The circular saw, which was invented by Tabitha Babbitt, this tool transformed woodcutting. Bro, um, first off, home security you look systems. At home security bro, you systems look, were created by Marie Van Britten, <laughs> uh, Britton Brown, primary modern security tech. Um, also, Wi Fi bro, technology. Bro, Hedy Lamar, she co invented frequency hopping. Spread spectrum, which became a basis for Wi Fi. I would and seriously more, like to, more. I would like to see the sources on what you're reading because it's a lot of garbage and fake news. Tech is exclusively a male field. You barely see any women in tech, and even when you do see women in tech as engineers, let's be honest, they're not designing anything. Most of the time, they're just glorified secretaries that are taking on the role and calling themselves engineers. What about men built everything we have, bro? I, I okay. What about human life? That was created by men and women. There we go. So we do need the women to be able I, to sustain. I already said women play a part in society. Okay. Don't you remember that? Part? So let, okay, now I see, what you, I see what you're saying. You put you're, you're saying this in a specific kind of system in a specific model. The, the problem I, I the problem I'm having is that a lot of people say take it to mean that I'm saying women are useless. No. Women aren't useless. They have a role in society. They're just not, their role just isn't leading. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Okay. What about, so... Women can't lead flies to shit, bro. I hate to say it. Like, there's a lot of things... <laughs> there's a There's a lot of things that women can do. Leading is not one of them. Women can't lead flies to shit. A man is supposed to lead them. A woman serves best as a help me to her man, because I'll be real... A man cannot help another man the way his woman can help him. 
that's why he marries the woman. You feel me? Okay, so uh, have you? Do you know about the uh, the matrilineal society that is in Ghana? The what? The matrilineal society in Ghana. It's I the, don't that because people. I, I don't because Africa is a failing country. They've been enslaved. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A failing continent. Is a continent. Africa is a, a continent. Failing continent. Yeah, a failing okay. continent. My but bad. okay, so now let's let's dive into some history here. Why would you say that Africa is a failing? First of all, it's not a country, it's a continent with countries that were divided up during the Berlin Conference, which African nations had no say in. Therefore, that conference is something that I think in history people should go back in time and change that aspect because deriving from that, it has caused all these different things which has transpired across the whole world Afri- leading to things How, how like many slavery. times has Africa been conquered? You tell me. How many conquerors have been? There have been so many conquerors in it. Africa's divided left and right. The oh, the governments okay. of Africa, the governments of Africa, don't even have sovereignty over their own land because they're being conquered and enslaved left and right, and they're still conquered to a, a massive degree. Africa has many great resources, and in fact, they're cursed by their resources because other people want it, desire it, and they always go in and conquer it. So anytime you tell me about a society in Africa, I would, I automatically think, oh, just another enslaved society. Why would I ever want to be that way? Okay, but I think that it's very important, though, to know, even though that, yes, those things are true. Right now, the, it's a very natural resource continent with a lot of opportunity. I was saying about the Akan people, they have this matri- matrilineal system where the women are the queen mothers. And in those areas, those kingdoms, um, like the Akan people, I think the Ashante region. Notice you call it a matriarchal society. So what does that mean? That means they're naturally getting digged down left and right, which is what happens to them. Doggy style means ass up, head down. They're getting raped left and right because of their matriarchal society. Can a woman fight in war the way a man can? No. That's why they get enslaved. That's why they get conquered left and right. Okay, Sydney, let's tone it down a little bit, okay? I, I, I don't want to. Okay, <laughs> fine. You want to, you want to tone. Okay, fine. You want to tone down. No, I don't want to tone it. Tone no, down? no, you have the, you have the right. You know, let's let's uphold the constitutional amendment. You know, the right. Okay, you have, you have okay, the right. Fine. Freedom I'll tone of speech. it down for you. I'll tone but it down. Let's for you. just Let say. Let's this. not say the like that woman, because let's let's say it in in, in, in a the first more woman. You look at the first way. woman. You look at the first woman, Eve. She led because this is based Adam was upon with. the Bible, right? Yes. Okay. She led. No one disagrees with that. She was the first leader. She led Adam right to that forbidden fruit that he was not supposed to eat because when a woman is leading, she's naturally weaker than the man, which is why Satan goes for her more. Where are you, where are you getting this information from? It's in the Bible, bro. It's left and right. You want to read scriptures right now? We can read about how God says... I want to says hear what scripture this is. I, I would like credible evidence and source to kind of see where you're going with this. Because, okay, going back to the whole African thing, right? And um, there's this whole conversation right now in the world about gender equality, which I 100% agree, and gender equity. Now, on the African continent, some nations, they have made more progress... Um, in having more representation within government, specifically in job sectors and also in areas of other industries. Rwanda is a great example. Now, what you're saying, it it sounds like a very, very, you know, this is what people would say, probably the toxic masculinity part. And I I would, I I don't, I don't judge you because such a thing as toxic femininity. I have participated in conversations before um, where I definitely have engaged in toxic masculinity, but I would not want to. Is there I would such not, a thing as toxic femininity? I, I probably there is. I've never really been. I'm not a woman, so I don't really know. Well, maybe there is because I mean, if you listen, if what you just said, somebody can argue what you're saying is toxic femininity. How by, is by, by referencing to women as bitches and making, uh, you know, saying it in that. Some people can say that is a toxic femininity type of approach from a masculine right. aspect, which actually. It's both because you're now women call each women call each other bitches all the time. <laughs> it's not it's not even it's not even to demean them because I've called women bitches all the time and they're always laughing. I say it in a friendly way. Women know it's just kidding. It's all fun. I, I'm not looking down on women. We need women to survive. Women have the kids. 
The only thing is she's supposed to be at home taking orders from her man. Not You want her at home cooking dinner, not in office cooking drama. I might just, oh, uh, we're just going to shift now to a different question. Uh, and well, by the way, you I'm said, for, you I'm said you wanted to hear. Yeah, I want to hear this. Yeah, you, you and, said and you please, wanted to please hear Please name the, 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 the book, the chapter, the verse, the number, everything. Okay, so this is the King James Version. This is First Timothy. Um, what's it called? Uh, it's uh, it's verse eleven through uh, fifteen. You have that up? Do you have the uh, Bible in your hand or a Bible app? Yeah. Okay. Boom. Let me know when you get there. I'm there. Okay. So I'll read it for you. You tell me if this is or actually you want to read it? No, you read it. You read it. This is your source. Is your oh. this is what you're using as your credible evidence citation to your <laughs> to the logic you provided? Let me hear this. <laughs> All right, this is First Timothy. This is the King James Version, verses 11 through 15. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So Adam was Adam was first formed, then Eve. It was Eve who was deceived. Now Adam was also wrong because he allowed his woman to lead him. By allowing her to lead him, you naturally go to the forbidden fruit and to Satan. If had Adam been leading, had he been in his masculinity, they would have gone to heaven. So I have a question then. I'm a follow up question go to ahead. what you just said. You know, I won't question what it, I won't question what you said. I trust your source, and I have in front of me. Well, but you have the Bible, yes, right there. I, I see it. it. But you know, it's up to interpretation to anybody. But up you, to but you can read it. Yes, it I can read it. Right but there. you know, it's up to anybody's interpretation. We're not here to spread or preach to. People, I mean, that's but, a pretty clear statement. Yes, I, I get it. So I have a question. So, do you think the United States is a is a nation of Christians or is a Christian nation? We were formed as a nation of Christians. However, the devil reared its ugly head in. Man lost power, we allowed women to lead, and now we're a country of atheists. However, we still have enough Christians to where we could potentially save it. We started off with a Christian foundation, and I believe one day we will take ourselves to God. The strong men will prevail. Okay, have you read that book uh, by Andrew Preston, The Sword of Spirit? I did not. I usually just hear from Andrew Tate, the G of G's. Okay. So, let me find, I have this book, I read this book, I can't find it. Anyways, so I would definitely recommend you to go read that book. Um, it's a good good book because it he provides a very critical perspective of how to look at religion when it comes to politics. Is it the guiding factor to how people make decisions or is it something that is innately within us in how we use religion to provide us with a moral compass? So we were that the founding fathers were all Christian and they all allowed religion to influence their beliefs and how they ruled. Do you believe in that? Yes, I do believe in Christianity. I see nothing wrong with it. When, when we were a Christian nation, you had peace. Now we're an atheist nation and you have men cutting their dicks off claiming to be women. Hmm? What you mean? Transgenderism. Men are cutting their dicks off and claiming to be women. Since when? Oh, what do you mean my since bad. <laughs> I'm over here distracted looking at my messages. Wait. So what do you think about that? Do you... I, okay. By I'll, the way, honestly, I can, I'll start, by off, the way, I can I'll start say, off by I saying this. You... I, I do... I do, do, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think it's something that should be taught in schools, especially K through 12, in terms of how children should participate within their sexual identity or their sexual life. That should be something that is left up to them, and they should not be told about these different things when they're at a yay, when their prefrontal cortex is not even able to have logical reason. So... I do agree and by the way, don't you think that's weird that we're teaching kids about transgenderism, about faggotry, and yet we don't teach them about, oh, gee, we don't teach them about male sex lives with women, heterosexual stuff. We teach them about this faggotry, about this uh, super faggotry called transgenderism. 
Don't you think that's weird? We're teaching it to them at a young age to where they're not even, they still think those kids still think girls have cooties. Why are we teaching it to them at such a young age? I mean, do you remember what, I mean, did you ever, did your parents have to sign off on you having to take those sex ed classes? No, they didn't because the government doesn't care about what parents think. The government wants to take control of the kids. It's all a strategy that's been used since the days of the Bible. It goes back to the Pharaoh in Egypt. He said to enslave the women and rape them and to, you know, kill the men. Nowadays, they've altered the strategy. Rather than killing the man, they kill his masculinity to make him powerless. And then they rape the women by claiming that they need to be all sexual, throwing their vaginas to every man and getting her to think she wants that. So, wow. Uh, how do you think the media kind of influences our views on gender roles nowadays and expectations? Because if you think about it, as technology has increased, people have more accessibility to information now. You know, a six-year-old can have the same access to information as uh, an, a, an adult. So how do you think that has influenced people's perspective? Well, number one, they're silencing the real influencers that are teaching goodness, Andrew Tate. I can send you some videos. <laughs> I from haven't Andrew heard of Tate. Andrew Tate in a while, bro. It's been at least two years since I've heard anything about Andrew Tate. Well, there's a lot of good stuff that's been going on there. I'm not going to spoil that. But uh, you look at our current Wait, what's times. Been going on? What's been going on? <clears throat> he recently got uh, control of all the possessions that the Romanian government wrongfully seized from him. Uh, he's been ordered to be, you know, he, he, he got out of prison finally. I believe he's still on house arrest or, or I think they actually ended the house arrest, but he's still uh, trapped in the country. So there's been a lot of good things. They tried to put him back in prison again, and he got out the next day. Very good things that are going on there. Okay. But uh, so... looking into it, you know, the media, they're influencing the children at, the, at an age where they're vulnerable. They're training women to think that they want to go out there and be whores, and they're training men to be bitches, to act like women, to, you know, do all this degrading stuff. Like nowadays you'll see boys or even some adult men dressing up like women and castrating themselves. It's pathetic. It's crazy. So now kind of going back to what you just said, and also previously we'll be discussing about the current elections going on. Um, would you say we're witnessing kind of a backlash of, well, are we witnessing a backlash against masculinity in the name of, like, gender equality and equity right now? Yes, we are witnessing a black clash against men. It's uh, Men have been constantly told that they are less than to look at the woman as superior. And we're seeing this all being led by Kamala Bimbo Harris, the greatest of all whores. We need to get her away from the office. That's why I don't want her to win. But also, you know, we got to look at it this way. Finally, men are starting to wake up and say, no, this is not right. And it's not because she's a woman, because I'll tell you what, let's say that, you know, we take her woman factor out. Kamala Harris is a terrible candidate. They're literally prompting her to win. And every woman who sh should look at Kamala Harris and say, wow, I hope she is not the first. <laughs> I don't. I hope she is not the first female president, but especially not the first black female president, so to speak, even though that's a lie. Because look at how pathetic she is. She didn't win a primary. <laughs> the last primary she ran in, she got 6% of the votes and she was the first candidate off stage. She can't answer a question to save her life. Every time they ask her a question, she starts talking about hope and love and peace. Meanwhile, when you look at her record on the actual question, she sucks. They asked her about her record on the economy. She can't answer that one because she knows that, you know, under her, the economy has gotten so much worse. She went to an interview on Fox News, or I think it was 60 Minutes, where she said, uh, we need to turn the page from Donald Trump. And the interviewer wisely said, Donald Trump isn't even the president. You're the vice president, so turn the page. What are you talking about? She was like, oh, you know what I'm talking about. He's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. She's okay. a horrible candidate. It's not just because she's a woman. She's a horrible candidate. So now let's get into the nitty-gritty of it. 
because this is where I would say I, I look past the aspect of whatever gender the person is. But let's get into the actual policy of stuff. Um, what do you think about her current uh, policy plans? Um, let's start off with the economic aspect. What do you think of that? What is her economic policy? I still don't know to this day what it is because she hasn't answered a single question on it. She keeps on talking about opportunity economy. Well, right now we've had three and a half years, about to be four years of her. I don't see this opportunity. Gas is in an all-time high. You look at the economy right now, it's terrible. The job market is crazy. If you graduate from college just now, good luck even finding a job. So when she talks all these things, I'm like, what is, number one, what is her econo economic plan? Because no one knows, she doesn't answer a question. And I don't see this econ opportunity economy she's talking about, because all I see is more and more people in debt with no way to pay it off. I mean, she is advocating for uh, middle class tax cuts and as well as fair wages. <laughs> and affordable health care. Um, Under which, Democrats, the taxes always get raised. So what tax cuts? Well, yeah, that to a certain extent, yes, I do agree on that part because there is some few things where it's kind of, um, I don't really know what actually her actual plan is because it's very vague to me right now. But what I do understand is that I would prefer you know what actually, I mean? yeah, I would prefer the more fiscal aspect, the fisc fiscally conservative aspect when it comes to economic uh, plans. But now I would prefer the candidate to have an actual plan and to tell us what it is, because I still don't know what it is. <laughs> so what do you think in terms of her approach? And by the way, I link this all to her gender. I do, because we have to we can't lie to. <laughs> no, ourselves. man. OK, we can. Okay, we got to We got to address she... this. We have to address this. <laughs> We have to address this. There okay, is no Nene, way, Sydney, Nene... you're going to sit here and say just because somebody's a woman, they cannot run a country. They have no capability of leading. That is something we have to get away from because if we keep why staying not? in that mentality, it will hold us back. And that is why the United no, States will continue. No, it's not holding yes, us it, back. Yes, we it went... will. It's holding us no, back. We literally okay? went we are, we are. The United States is leading right now in the, in the global standards, uh, uh, let's say, We're losing when it comes to, to pushing for gender equality rights no We've we cannot the worst no 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 we cannot right say that bro you what? cannot say just because she's a woman she cannot <laughs> leave and you see that's maybe probably why obama was saying these things because he feels and he maybe sees the misogyny that's going on when it comes to obama per is the world's greatest simp right but now no, okay let's look, let's think about this, this though let's think about this though when hillary was was running i don't think these arguments was being used they were not saying because she's a yes, woman she can't leave no but she actually over. won she won she won. She won the popular the, the vote. Popular she, vote. Lost, she lost the general election, though. You the, so the we have that argument. Vote. We cannot because now that perpetuates a conversation of actually making black women feel inferior. When you how do say, you make black women? How do I make black women it, it, feel that's inferior? A, the, so I'm saying that you cannot make that the basis factor. This okay, is let me, about let me, the policy. Let me ask you this. Okay? Let me ask you this. She was let me a senator before, whatever her experiences as a senator. That's what we should be judging it on. Uh, you, re you realize the only of gender. If Donald you Trump was a woman, only... would you, would you, let's just say this: If Donald Trump was a woman, Hillary but still ran had the same. Joke? No, let's hold on, hold on. If Donald Trump was a woman, but still had the same. Politi uh, policy agenda and political agenda. Would you vote for him? If Donald Trump was a woman, there's no way he would have the same policy agenda. No, 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 no. Let's just let's just say he decided to be okay, to identify fine. himself okay. as a woman. Okay, would you still okay, vote fine. for him? If Donald Trump is a man identified as a woman, hell no. But he still had the same economic plans. I mean, uh, that, not just economic plans, but he still had the same plans to be president. Would he have the same plans? He's literally saying that a man should not be in a in a boxing match with a woman on stage. He literally said yes, that. Yes, I so, agree. Yes, I agree. I do agree so that sometimes he, yeah, biology man, and science does come into play. But we can't, bro, there's no so way he is a man that, identified we can make as a woman, that basis by saying just because somebody is a woman, they cannot lead, they don't have the capability of doing things. And yes, I... I'm not discrediting you for your opinion on the aspect of, you know, she might have a history Okay, let me of these ask things, you this. Let me ask you this. But we cannot base it upon the fact she's a woman, bro. Do you, that is do you think, not do you think right. A woman I can, can see do, why Obama said those things. Do you, think a woman can do, do you think a woman can do everything a man can do? To us, yes. You think so? Yes. Okay, so then right now, 
Why okay, let me ask it, you this. Why, why was there a statistic? It, why no, no. Wait, why wait, was wait, there wait. a statistic saying that more women graduated from college? Why? Why? Why is it there are more women college. graduated from college? Maybe because they might men. have better intellectual abilities than us. We might be more no, physically capable than them. No, no bro. You no, can't, we cannot just have, no, bro. We have to no, We gotta lying. break that. You're we gotta break. We gotta you're break that gender thing, bro. We cannot you're base it upon just because somebody's gender. How you're lying. You're lying. All right, number one. Number one. Originally, it was men who was leading in it. Then, because they saw that women weren't going enough, they started investing money. They started recruiting more and more women, and they started leading more efforts to do it. And then men became the minority in it. And then what's it called? No one gives a fuck because it's men who are in the minority. But guess what? Men are still making more salaries on end. Why is that? Because although women are getting more and more degrees, they're getting the most degrees in bullshit. You got a, you got a degree in gender studies. What can you do about that? You can Learn write. About the gender no, 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 listen. You can, that means you can write. No, you can't yes, write. Yes, you can. You can't you graduate with a degree in gender studies if you don't know how to write. All you do is policy write. Policy involves dumb... writing, so they can work in policy field. They can all be you alleged do is write. Analysts, bro. There's all plenty you... of options. Yes, I all do understand. Do with... wait, 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 wait. All you do with gender studies is write dumb papers about a gender wage gap that was only started because men are getting more degrees in tech and in STEM that actually matters while your dumbass got a degree in gender studies, which which isn't useful in society. All right. Let me let me break this down. Let me break this down for you, city. Who All makes right. more money on average, men or women? Look, 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 look. I, I'm 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 gonna break this down for you. I'm gonna break this down for you. Because of the current no, the reason that because why of laws. Is it men because of laws. More because money of laws. Because, because of laws. Degree. No, because of laws. Because of laws. But let's let's break this down like this. Right? <laughs> because of the laws. Listen, listen, we're gonna get it. We're gonna transition to a different topic. But let's break it down like this. All right, the, to the college aspect. I brought up the, the statistic that more women. There was a, at some point. I don't know what the current data is. Um. Let me actually look it up. Men Let's don't want to go to college because it's not teaching them anything useful. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Let's be, let me be very, let me be factual here. Let me be factual here. Men and women makes more money. Men do. Who gets more college degrees? Women do. So why is the disconnect that men make more money? Could it be because right. college is so now it's, let me so let's 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 let me let me provide you I with love that how rebuttal. You here. When I'm about to no, win. I'm about to tell you this. So yes, women have more graduate degrees than men. Uh huh. You're right. When it comes to pay, men do make more than women. Yes. The reason behind all these things is because of the social norms behind it, and also <laughs> when hold up, hold up. When did women get their rights to vote? I think it was during the suffrage movement in the United and States. And we need to take it was, away I think that it was right 1919. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Women getting the right to vote has caused all the chaos in society. All right, wait, all right. 1919. Women getting the right to vote has caused all the chaos in society. We're going to go like this. We're going we to do this. We're going to do this. I'll give, you a, I'll give you a scenario. One person who's a man and one person who's a woman. They both have a degree in gender studies. Both have the same experience in everything. They both apply for a job. They both get the job. Well, do you think they should be both paid the same, or one should be paid more than the other because they're a man? You should get paid based on your merits. All right. And I believe, now, I, and I, and I believe every go. time a man's merits are going to be usually higher than a woman on a very uh, rare. No, bro, okay, you got to come on. On a very we rare gotta section. Stop that. We got to. <laughs> you got to be it. honest with yourself. I'm gonna post Stephen A. Smith. That is blasphemous, bro. No. That is the so, truth, bro. Now let's go back to what you were saying in terms of the type of degrees people get. I agree with you. There are some degrees that have higher projections for people in their earnings. And for example, engineers. Women do, men do. It does not matter. Men not get the when I talk about gender is here. An all male I have seen an IR woman. I have seen an engineer woman. I've seen uh, it doesn't matter. But let's do how that. Let's, many, let's, let's just have let's just say this from a neutral see. point of view. I'm gonna tell you this from a neutral point of view, right? How many female? The projections do say that people who major in specific things, like STEM related majors, are more likely to earn more money. Which is because most of the men. rate of return in that. Which now, is mostly versus, men. Listen, versus somebody who is in the humanities field might make less than somebody in the STEM field. But that's based on projections. Now, if that's the case, and we have this whole thing about student I'm about to just go all over the place here. We have that whole thing. People graduate with student loans, people whatever. 
What are the and chances? It's usually women who have what the are, most student loans. Oh, Sydney, come on, yeah. bro. Give me the data. Give me the facts. Give me, give me the numbers. The give me the numbers. No, give me the numbers. 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 They have the highest student loans and they make the lowest pay. Why? Okay, because Sydney, they get degrees so are and are you are you shit. right now? Right now, to me, what it seems like you're doing, it seems like you're violating the Civil Rights Act. I think. I'm you're not violating you're, any civil you're, rights you're, act. You're, you're tech, based upon your argument, it technically says you should discriminate somebody based on their gender. No, I'm not the saying that. The Civil Rights Act says you should not. No, I think wait, it's the Civil wait, Rights wait, Act. Wait, wait, we can agree on this one. You should make the most money based on the merits of your labor, right? Okay, I agree. And That's I it. believe almost every time a man's labor oh, is going God. to way outpace a woman's labor. Women are useless in the workplace. Which is why, guess who works the most hours? Men do. Guess who takes the most vacations? Give me the data. Give me the numbers. Guess, the numbers. guess who takes the most vacations? You know what, Cindy? We Women gonna to, do. We're going we to have to do... We're going to do, I'm gonna have to, we gonna have to pull up the numbers, man. Well, let's look up the numbers. Men work the most hours. We work the most overtime hours. Women take the most vacations. All right. You know what? I'm not even going to do that. But what I'm going to say is this now. Yeah, I know because I, I, I you know agree the with you. So the, the reason why I'm saying it like this is because I think it's very important on why gender should not factor into political yeah, decisions. It should be based on the merits no, of the it should not. Yes, it should not because it should be based on and who has the best labor qualifications. Um, just texting me. Who has, the, who has the best labor? Usually, it's a man. Now, okay, so. Going back to what I was trying to tell you, because what you said, I completely disagree based upon what somebody's degree is. This is now beyond the scope of gender, okay? Uh -huh. What did you study? Political science and modern philosophy and professional writing. This is why you have all these goddamn theories and gosh. Anyways, I, I majored in economics, right? What are the, College we're, is we're, useless. College we're in the is same, useless. Wait, hold up. We're in the same, <laughs> we're still in the humanities field, right? Right, but college is useless. My beliefs come... And by the way, if I actually did pay attention, I'd be a liberal loser the way most college students nowadays are because college has been hijacked by these leftist loonies who think that they know everything when they know nothing. My beliefs and my thoughts and my processes and how I conduct myself is all unique based to me. I agree. And, and, because a, and by... on. Really quick, and that's why we are on the Stay and True to Yourself right. platform. It's all about your perspective, your narrative. Everybody's unique in their own way, and you're entitled to how you feel and what you believe in. But uh, a constructive discourse never hurts. It only builds. So what I was going to tell you is this. Great, women women have back. great abilities. They you know, do. Obviously, now, you need it. Kind of, I don't want to talk about the gender stuff no more right now. It's kind of, it's kind of <laughs> pissing me off. It's kind of pissing me off. <laughs> It's kind of pissing me off because kind of pissing me off. Let's, let's talk. So you say in college, right? The student debt aspect. Let's talk about student debt. Okay. Do you yeah, think student debt it. should be? Do you think student debt should be erased? No, you knew what it was when you signed on to it. I believe the way we fight it is that you know more and more people need to stop going to college. College isn't worth it anymore. It was in the late two, in the early 2000s, late 1900s, back when fewer people had it. But now everyone and their grandma has a college degree, so you don't distinguish yourself well, you get anymore. Get a master's and a PhD, goddamn it, shit. No, you, no, that's just that's a nah, horrible strategy to do. That's where that's where I disagree with you. Wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. But let me finish. Let me finish. Let me, you give me, let me finish. College degrees do not distinguish yourself anymore. And then number two, you spend all this time in college when you should be getting real work experience because what distinguishes you is your resume and that's all based on the experiences you gain working. You, when you're a college graduate, you don't really have experience because you've been in school the whole time learning these impractical skills. The workforce is where you get your skills. So there's that. And then mm. number three, the money you could use to start a business, the money that you could use to do so much for yourself, you're now in debt with. College teaches you how to be a debt slave. You want to make money, and yet you're learning from a poor man, a.k.a. a professor, on how to be rich, which is why people stay poor. College is useless. I don't care if you have a Stanford degree. Right, I don't care you if you have a Harvard degree. Are you done, it's Sydney? Are you done? And by the way, who's leading in society? Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, 
Where's their college? Oprah degree? Winfrey? God damn it, Kamala Harris, they're leading in society. What you talking about? Come on now. Let's not just Kamala not be smart Harris, gender. Kamala Harris didn't lead because she's because of the merits of her labor. Sydney, I got a question, led, man. Do I will, give, I will give Kamala Harris this. I will give Kamala Harris this. She didn't lead because of the merits of her labor, but she is smart for a woman. She knew who to sleep with, Willie Brown, to get her start. And I believe she's sleeping with Joe Biden to get the vice presidency. Why else we would Joe not, Biden? We do, no, those are false why accusations, else Joe, bro. Why, well, Don't well, say wait. that. No, no, no. Well, he wait. is a married okay. man. No, we're gonna. I'm gonna cut you off right oh, there. Really? We're gonna, so we're gonna go Biden's back to the topic. Man. We're talking about student day. We're talking well, about Bill student Clinton day. was a married man too. That didn't stop him. Well, but okay, I, I, because I, he's a married look, man. I wasn't an American citizen at that time, so I have no oh, comment on it. Really. Anyways. Look, at the end of the day, why else would Joe Biden choose the bimbo who on stage call him racist, said, I was a black girl, you refused to let on the bus, Joe, and then he chooses her for his vice presidential pick? I think he was sleeping with her. I think he, you know, exchanged that, that pay-for-play thing. I believe that he exchanged that position for sexual favors. Willie Brown, what? we know... Willie Brown, we know she slept her way to the top with Willie Brown. He, she, he said it himself. I, we slept together, and I gave her positions. Sydney, look, we're talking about student debt here, okay? We're not talking about who people, who people are sleeping with now. So, okay, well. student debt. You said that student debt, people should know what they're getting themselves into. I completely agree. They now, do, and now, now you have I to definitely be responsible. Agree on the, and I definitely agree on the aspect. There are some majors that have higher projections of earnings after graduations, making them more likely to pay off their student debt earlier and faster. And also, there's some people out there who go to college for free through scholarships and fellowships and grants. Where I, okay. where I, this is something I think that should be done in mitigating the problem of student debt. So, the current way the system is set up, I completely don't think there should be any change in terms of how students get to college. I am pro, and I completely agree for people to attend college. I think it's a great place for people to go learn, meet people, figure themselves out, uh, can construct different opinions, different perspectives. It's a great space for that. Some people might have differing opinions on that, but I believe in that. Now, when it comes to addressing a student debt, this is where I think it can be addressed. We have executives and people who are on these college campuses making thousands of dollars and millions of dollars. I think the way we can approach this student debt problem is we need to cut their pay take a percentage of their pay aggregate it across the whole united states and pay off student debt or mitigate the problem by not increasing the student debts in the nation and i think that this is, can this solve is the problem pro so this is the problem with people number one you just said people should be paid based on the merits of their labor. But well, listen, based, listen. Based there's this the thing called there's this thing called when you file your taxes, you report what you have decided to donate. That should be considered taxes something they have donated from their checks that they're getting. Taxes if you're a something. chancellor or a president of a college and you're paying getting paid a million dollars. I'm not I'm not saying because may, hey, maybe one day I might be a college president. I will gladly take a right, percentage of my pay to be going you said what? Taxes are for suckers. So you don't like taxes? Hell no. Look, this country was based upon no taxation without representation. Anyways, the reason I say that is because... Why would you want... Who, who's going to spend your money better? You or the government? Hmm. Um, it depends. Right. It's all based on perspective. So in your perspective, who do you think is going to spend your money better? You, Texware Bowie, or the government? It depends. In your perspective, because in my perspective, it's going to be me, Sydney Adebayo, it, it, it depends, who spends my it depends money It depends on the it depends on uh, the the marginal returns, because if you give me a million dollars versus giving the government a million dollars, the way I spend it is it going to only impact me, versus if I give the government, they might use it to provide. Who earn the money? Who earn the money? Okay, so let me ask let me, you. I'm, did. I'm asking you. I'm, I'm addressing your question. So that's why I said it depends. On what the use of the money is. If you is used earn for. the money, who's going to spend it more responsibly? You will because you had to earn every penny. Okay, but what Daddy if I go spend? What if I just go to Vegas and spend it all? Is that responsible? If you, if, if you earned a million dollars, would you really do that? You could do what? If you say you've never had a million before and you earned a million dollars through skill and merit and hard work, would you really blow it all? Shit, I can. Yeah. The hell. 
you could no one doubts that you could but you probably wouldn't because you had to blood sweat and tears to earn that million daddy government didn't have to work for shit for it yes which they is did why look i think daddy okay i think this is where we kind of get collecting you're a political your science major through. How are collecting, taxes? How do taxes become? Money through, how how do you end up having? How do people end up having to pay taxes? Because we're suckers. We no, because there's laws up. behind it. Because laws life. Right, we actually, those we, laws we are created so that weak people listen to it and pay it. You should never have to pay taxes. Sydney, what the and hell are you me, saying? And let me just tell you what this. What the hell are you saying right now? <laughs> what let, are you let saying? Me just tell, so you are not. Tell. So you're not. Are you trying to say you don't abide by the tax laws? Unfortunately, I have to because I'm weak and I'm <laughs> exactly. a sucker. Exactly. So if you get a but the so G's the top G's they don't pay taxes. So this is what I'm saying. If you was giving a me, if you were saying if I was giving a million dollars, what would I use it for? No, I, no, I didn't say if you were given a million dollars. I said a million if you dollars. earned that million okay, dollars. Okay, if I earned a million blood, dollars, tears, if I earned a million dollars through your blood, sweat, I and tears. Said, well, you said, would I rather give the money to the government or to myself, right? No, I said, well, how would you really blow it in one night in Vegas? And I like said, you said, it depends. It depends. Because really? with the current way the system is set up is that money is a medium of exchange. I cannot have that $1 million without others around me. Also without the government. So I already know at least, at least 50% of that money has to go to the government because that's the only way I can Not generate another million dollars. Not if you're smart. Okay, so tell me, so tell me then, what would you do if you if you earned a million dollars? Would you go? You're not gonna pay your taxes on it. I'll create a business. I'll use tax write offs and do who whatever you gonna I a business need to through? do. Who's gonna, who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna who who will be the one to uh, make your business legit? I'll have to find that out. It'll be the government. Either. It will be the government. No, who, it's who not are you gonna file? Who are you gonna have to file? Who are you gonna have to file your make forms your with? Business, the government doesn't. Who make makes your business, business legit? legit? You. Okay. You're the one who has to create that business. The government. I agree with you to some extent. The government. But I, I, what I would like to tell you is that you, you can't escape the government when it comes to that type of money. You still gonna there have to report. That, there are G's that do it, and that's why. And then, they, and then later on, they get, why, they get they get followed for tax evasion. Wait, wait, wait. wait. That's why when they asked Donald Trump the question, they were like, uh, show that you paid zero taxes when you were trying to get a casino license. And he said, that makes me smart. So there are G's that get away with it. It does. It, I mean, that's a, that's a good answer. He did answer the question. So, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> but taxes, I was asking and you, laws in so... gen- taxes and laws in general are for poor people. Rich people don't abide by them. So are you in favor of Kamala in this sense? What do you mean? Because you said taxes are for poor people, not for the rich people. So are, does that mean you would be in support of what Kamala is pushing for? Middle, t- middle, uh, middle, middle class tax. Kamala, n- number one, Kamala Harris lies every other sentence that comes out of her mouth. She said she's going to tax the wealthy. Well, the wealthy are the ones who are literally paying for your campaign. You're going to tax your donors, hella, hella, ha, huh? when they're the when they're your donors, right? Just like Hillary Clinton said, I'm going to tax the rich people. <laughs> Meanwhile, she humps Wall Street more than any other candidate on both aisles. I mean, she was in the board of Obama. But so let me ask you this: since you Lies. were very vocal on this, do you think gender should come into a play when it comes to tax policy? Should women or men pay more taxes? So let me just answer it this way: men pay more taxes currently because men make more money. So you you make more money, you get taxed more. Well, why are you laughing, man? It's true. Men make more money, right? <laughs> give me so the, if you give have me the more... numbers. Give me the, the, the hard fact numbers, Sydney. You got your you got sources. What are you, what, give me the what hard are you facts talking, numbers. What, Look what this are you up. talking Provide what are you me with talking? an actual source of information for what these, are you talking? For these for this. Provide me with one, please. Right, but what are you talking about? Literally gender studies says because they because they added up all the money men make and all the money women make. And that's why feminists claim that they only make 78 cents on the dollar for every every dollar that men make. Literally, no one disputes that when you add up all the funds that men make and all the funds that women make, men make more. If you make more, you have more money, you get taxed more. Okay, now let's shift kind of to that. Let's shift to a different topic. I don't want to talk. Yeah, about yeah, that. but what I'm trying to say is currently, yeah, men men pay more of taxes because they make more. However, it should be women who are taxed more. The reason being because women are more dependent on the government and they use these government programs more than any man does. 
So for that reason, they should be the ones taxed more. But realistically speaking, it's not going to happen because men make more money. Women don't. Women don't have the money to pay for, to pay those higher taxes, even though they use the government, daddy government, more than anyone else. So how would you say the U.S. should approach immigration policy right now to kind of balance the economic needs, national Donald security, Trump was a G. and humanitarian concerns? Donald Trump was a G at this one. We need to bring back Remain in Mexico. And by the way, this is not an attack against Mexico. They are, are geographic. They're geographically the closest to us. They're the only ones with the ability. People in Africa can't be illegal immigrants. They're not going to travel all the way from Africa on foot. Mexico is a threat. They're the ones right next door to us. So, of course, they do it more. But we need to re bring back Remain in Mexico if you're looking for asylum. We need to have a wall. We need to build that wall higher and it needs to be stronger. And then we also need to put a moat on that wall. Let's put a moat on it. Let's put electric wires on that thing. Let's put spikes. And we need to have like men trained, ready to shoot at these. Uh, at so these you're, you're trying to kill of. people. That's that's killing people. That's we need murder. to have them ready to shoot and keep them out. That's murder. Man. Stop hopping the borders. You don't hop the borders, you won't get shot. <laughs> <yet. laughs> Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Your house, right? If someone was trying to break into your house and sleep in that house and you have your gun and you killed the person breaking in trying to squat in your home, would that be justified? Well, I would definitely handle the situation to the best of my ability without harming right, parties. Right, but you're not going to let would, someone come I in would and ensure, squat your yes, property. I would ensure I protect my properties and my needs and uh, my surroundings. So why would it be bad if the United States protects its property? I agree. I do agree to the sense of that they should have borders that are not allowing people who are either uh, criminals or people who are um, just the running away. The isn't good enough. But it, what I would say is this. I think that when it comes to the, the Mexican border, um, Mexico border, I'd say that's how you were saying it. The Mexico border and the U.S. border. One of the biggest problems is probably the amount of people who are coming there from actually not just Mexico, but from other countries. Now, right, those people are running. Some of them are actually legit. They're running away from wars and they're actually in seek of asylum, and they definitely do deserve that. And you'll remain in Mexico until you get that asylum. Now, what I don't think is credible or not credible but I, what i don't think is right to do i don't think you should be killing them and shooting them that no we need to have i a think wall. every human being deserves be their right to stay to alive stronger. until their time comes we wait 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 we need to have a wall built it needs to be taller it has to be sturdier we need to put electric wiring on that thing oh, to God. destroy them we need spikes on it we need a moat maybe with some snakes and crocodiles in that moat and we need to have uh, men right there shooting at them whenever they try to hop in. We need a monitoring system as well. A monitoring system to make sure, you know, to monitor around, seeing what, maybe fly some drones out there. But bottom line is, there is more security at Costco than there is at the U.S. border. And that's a shame indeed. Say that again, what? We have more security at Costco because Costco... Makes you have your Costco and your ID, a photo ID <laughs> on you. There is more security at Costco than there is at the U.S. border and in our voting system. That is a shame. Hmm. I never thought of it like that. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sydney, I do have a question for you, man. Mm -hmm. um, do you plan on getting married, man? Uh, I'll probably be married in the eyes of the church and not the state. Either that, or if you do get married in the state, make sure you have a prenup and a post nub. I'm still debating on which one. I'm leaning more towards just get married in the eyes of the church and not the state, mainly because you don't want all this fuckery from the state and daddy government coming into your beautiful marriage and destroying it and corrupting this and training her to divorce me, try to take all my money. So do you believe in love? I believe men should be loving, but not in love. What about a woman? Women women are always loving, but the thing is, they have to be moderated. They have to be tamed. <laughs> a woman, you know, she shows love through her submissiveness. When she cooks you those meals that you need, when she serves as your help me, when she remains silent and less spoken to, and when she gives you that pussy that you need at night, 
preferentially accompanied with some head. Okay. Um, I, I don't, you don't like head, bro. I, I don't know how to follow like up. That? I don't know how to follow you don't like up head, with. Bro, uh, why are you looking like that? I, I don't know how to follow up with that. Um, but well, I will try to follow up with now in terms of um, what are you current thoughts right now when it comes to kind of the landscape when it comes to uh, pushing for climate change and environmental policy. I used to believe in climate change. Uh, what changed? What changed? Mainly just now I've seen, you know, those minority scientists that are being blocked from speaking, saying differently. I've also come to realize that the earth is always changing. The earth didn't always used to look like this. Remember, supposedly there was an ice age that accompanied after the dinosaurs were supposedly wiped out. Supposedly, you know, what used to be deserts are now lakes. What used to be lakes and oceans are now deserts sometimes. The earth is always changing, so how can we say because it's changing now that's directly linked to climate change? I believe that, you know, we got to drill, baby, drill, the way Trump says it. <laughs> you know, we, ha we have to get oil. This whole dependence on electricity, and I think it's a hoax. What do you I mean? I believe that it's been... Let's be honest, they're trying to, Elizabeth Warren is trying to ban crypto currently, supposedly because it uses too much electricity and it hurts the environment. Okay, you want to do that, but then you want to promote electric vehicles that use way too much electricity too. A whole neighborhood couldn't even support it, electric vehicles, but you'd have to re completely redo the wiring system because they don't produce enough electricity to do it. At the end of the day, these electrical vehicles are taking way too much money and they take way more from the environment. And also these electric vehicles, guess what? The power plants that power them, they use fossil fuel too. I would agree on, uh, I don't think we'll ever, ever shift away from fossil fuels because mostly everything that we do use do have some sort of fossil fuel influence. But I do actually believe in the aspect of the pushing for uh, of a less carbon footprint. Um, would I rather buy a Chinese made solar panel versus an American made solar panel? I'd rather take an American solar made panel because it offers less carbon footprint. Um, and when it comes to the electrification push, I do think that it's very important to consider the nuance and the complexities that come with it, considering of where you're actually getting those specific minerals to build those electric vehicles and those batteries. That is the most important aspect because the only way to push for that is if we actually have secure supply chains. Now, you have to have a supercharger to power these electric vehicles. So they take way too much energy. Just use the damn gasoline and stop playing. But that but you got to remember, we're pushing for higher standards and higher environmental standards. We're right trying now, to preserve and doing, save our planet, right, man. Right now, I don't see the planet being saved. I just see more and more people in higher debt. Because guess what? Those Teslas that people are keep buying, those electric vehicles... They easily cost it like at least five to ten thousand dollars more than the gasoline powered variant. You can't even afford it, which is why the government is pushing seventy five hundred dollar rebates on people. Where are they getting that money? They can't afford that. Every time someone buys an electric vehicle, the government is wasting seventy five hundred dollars. And by the way, why is the government giving free money? One of the rules in the forty eight laws of power despise the free lunch. You're getting 7500 for free? Yeah, right. If everyone switches to electric vehicles, guess what the government is going to do? They're going to design a law to put kill switches in those cars so that... No, you hold know, up. No, 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 no. So that's a national security concern, want. bro. That's, a na that's more of a national security concern now because now you have to not understand the supply chain because it's not just the government. You got to think about where are these batteries being made for these cars? Yeah. Where are these batteries yeah. being made? Where are they sourcing these materials and minerals for these batteries? Where are they being manufactured and processed? And then where are they being shipped? We can definitely agree that China does have at least 90% uh, domination in the global supply chain when it comes to... Because of Kamala Harris, if you put Donald no, no, Trump no, no, in... No, 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 We're not going to blame it on... This is now it'll, more... This is yes, more of a bigger yes, scope than this. This is more of when not Donald collaboration Trump was aspect. in office, we had the war on... With the economy he pulled out of China. the Paris trade he agreement. The war on he trade. pulled out of the... What is it? The Iran nuclear deal? What he else... He even Why threatened... Why did he pull out even, of these deals? He even Why threatened... Did he, pull to, out of he, even deals? Threatened, he even threatened to... Uh, what is it? To pull out of uh, NATO. Why like, did he? Well, Brian, but why did he do that? Because the United States 
every all, one of these countries that are living in peace are doing it under the United States dime, and they're not paying their fair share to the United States. So do you think, okay, what well, do you think that the BRICS is We're something We're literally that... spending billions of dollars to Ukraine while our people at home are complaining they don't have enough money for groceries. Hmm. What about the BRICS? What's your thoughts on the BRICS? On the what? The BRICS. What BRICS? B-R-I-C-S. I don't even know Brazil, what you're talking Brazil, Russia, about. India, China, South Africa, where they're trying to create a currency that will compete and de-dollarize the, the dollar, de-dollarization. Bro. At the end of the day, these countries are relying on the United States. We're footing the bill for their safety. No, okay, and so this is not, where Sydney. And they're, clearly, and they're not clearly, paying the United clearly, States the money that they deserve. Clearly, when it comes to the electrification aspect, you do have a point to a certain extent of how expensive and costly it is, right? But the most important thing, though, to understand now is the sourcing for materials is the most important thing. The United States is trying to get themselves up there in a, having a secure, reliable supply chains of materials to be able to push for more clean energy. And we I do need agree to with drill, you. It is a, baby it, drill. It is a we have costly the resources thing, but at home. we have the ability. Under Trump, we were getting energy independence. We were drill, baby, drilling. Give me the facts. Now, now, come on now. It. Give me the facts. Give me the facts. Look at it. Give me the facts. What do you mean give you the facts? What's the numbers? Tell me the numbers then if you if that's the case. Tell me the numbers. Tell me the numbers. We could look that up another day, but yeah. Right, we can look Trump, it up right look it up right now. You better well, uh, Trump, uh, we were getting you were, energy independence. Tell me the we were on a road tell towards me the, energy okay, independence. I'll look it up for you. I'll look it up for you. I'll look it up for you. We can't do that right now. It takes a while to do it, and we're on a live chat, my friend. That's why I'm hesitant to do it. I'll look it up for you. And please don't go to CNN. They lie like they breathe all the time. I, I watch diverse. I, I listen to all diverse perspectives. So, the U.S. was a net exporter of energy in both 2019 and 2020, meaning it exported more energy than it imported, which is an achievement that was last seen in the 1950s, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the question I have for you is, why are we so net import reliant on minerals that are used in developing these batteries for electrification? Tell me what do you think you do you know why? why why are we so strapped? No, why are we net importing? We have a hundred percent net import on things like lithium, things like uh cobalt. Uh, well, actually, not okay, lithium. Let me run this. Have, let, no, no, not, let not, me not, run not this lithium. For you. We have lithium reserve. We have lith we we have a net <laughs> import on cobalt, right? Cobalt is something that we need for cars. So when you say that it's going to be a costly thing and a costly push, it clearly makes sense of why it's costly because we're importing these things. Things that are imported have a higher chance of actually not higher chance. If you import something, you're okay. going to sell it at a higher let price. Me, so of let course me, it makes sense of why this. things would be expensive when it comes to the push for yeah, this. But, let me, but what let I don't put, understand is put. why should we keep relying on energy sources that are not clean for the environment? Because the more we do let that, me, let me the more this, it loses our credibility. Okay, tell me. Let me let me point this one out for you. Why are we so dependent on imports? Number one, in the United States, we have laws or whatever to pay employees, you know, a livable wage. I don't believe in the whole, you know raise minimum wage but we pay our employees a decent amount you look at china their people are being paid crumbs that's why you make things so cheap out there yeah they don't care about well, their their environmental laws they right they, that's right, why i said right, i'd rather buy an right, american solar panel cheap, rather than a chinese right, solar panel make it, because they have less carbon footprint right they make it cheap in china so what happens they so make would you it rather cheap, buy a chinese toaster versus it, an wait, american wait, wait, toaster wait, right they make it they make it cheap, and so then they import it into the United States, and stupid Kamala Harris and <laughs> dumb Joe, they allow it to come in our country. They don't put tariffs on it, and so what happens? Now, we've, now we're reliant on China. When Donald Trump comes in the picture, he puts the tariffs on them. That way we can, you know, our American manufacturers I mean, look, well, have a chance. Because Biden did also play along with what Donald Trump did when it came to... Uh, no, he tariffs. didn't. Biden yes, screwed he did. us he over. Increased, I think he increased the percentage of uh, tariffs 
on imports. Biden, and and I ask you, did... would you rather would you rather buy a Chinese toaster or an American toaster to toast your bread? Which one would you rather make? Which it one would you rather? Depends on perspective, but ideally, we would be selling more American toasters in the United States. The fact but that what China if I told you, be, you people are more buying Chinese toasters other than they're buying American toasters because the Chinese because ones are more don't cheaper, tariffs but they have a higher carbon footprint. To. Right, because we don't put tariffs on them the way they need to. Look, your average buyer doesn't care about their carbon footprint. I hate to break it to you. They don't. <laughs> they care about the price, and they care about the efficiency of using it. So when China delivers all these goods, our stupid government lets them do it without tariffs. Of course, China wins. So you'd rather you just you'd rather you're you're a patri- you're a, you're a patriotic guy, right? So Let's would you would you would you Let's want your country to always be net import reliant on things that are for daily? No, needs? which is why I want Donald Trump in power. Because when Donald Trump was power, we were on a road to energy independence. We drilled, baby, drilled. We had a war on trade but with when you China. Keep, do you know that the more we keep, I I don't I don't disagree to we that. Had but a do war you know on that trade doing with China? Where he was raising tariffs on them, and we were finally competitive again. We still have, again. though. We still have. Biden has also increased those tariffs. He He's a up, loser. He, he lets them come in. Have you seen it? In. When's the last time He's a you, loser. Uh, he lets them come in. He doesn't put tariffs on them. He calls Trump a xenophobic for it. <laughs> no wonder we get all the problems we do. Okay. So, Sydney, what it seems to America's me is like... America's a vagina right now, and she's been forced wide open. Every other country is raping her. China's raping it with trade. Uh, Japan is raping it in trade with cars. Mexico is raping us with trade and at the border. We're losing to everybody. So what reforms, if any, do you think are needed to... We need uh, to put share the integrity on countries. and fairness in the election process, one, and then as well as ensuring that Americans are served to their needs. No, oh, if you're talking about the election, we need to call 2020 what it was, a rigged election. We actually allowed this rigging, and that means we've probably allowed oh rigging. God. We've allowed rigging throughout history. I want to put different hands we on for to, this. I, I want to, what? We need what? to, Sydney, what we, we need to call 2020 what, what it was. What? We need to call 2020 what it was, a rigged election and honestly, throughout history, the elections have probably been rigged. We need to require voting ID for our election process, both state and federally, and even locally. We need voter ID. We need to stop giving illegal immigrants driver's licenses. We need to put a ban on door-to-door ballot harvesting. We need to say, if you want to vote, that's fine, but you're going to do it in person at the voting booths that are created. If you need to vote by mail, I understand. You you know, if you're a patriot serving in you know another country, you get uh, you get a uh, what's it called mail in balloting. If you're on your deathbed in the hospital, you get mail in balloting. If you're a perfectly able person, you get in person and you're gonna vote right where I can see you. End ballot harvesting. End the illegal stuff they do, especially in America. America is the queen. The legal, I'm sorry, not America, California. California is the queen, the transgender queen of illegal voting. We don't require voter ID <laughs> and illegal immigrants oh, are able to get God. driver's licenses that look just like the uh, official driver's licenses. We need to put an end to that. You're illegal, you don't get a driver's license. What about health care reform? What do you, what, what's your take on that? We need privatized health care. Health care, I wish... It was a right, but it is not a right. You have to pay for it. You have to pay these doctors. Private health care rules. Anytime you make health care public and everyone can use it, you get the shittiest health care. Go look at France. Their health care is shitty. You have to wait in these long lines and you rarely ever get to see them. And doctors are paid crap money, so you don't get very good doctors either. Private health care works. What we need to do is put an end to this whole focus on, you know, the cost of health care and focus on the things that make you because, look, it's just like this. Do you treat your car like shit and then complain about the mechanic bill or do you value your car treated properly so you don't have to see the mechanic? Same thing with health care. Look at our food. The United States is supposedly a great nation. Our food quality is the shittiest in the world, which is why we have more obesity than any other country. We're known as the country of hamburgers and obesity to other countries. 
our food quality is shit, the steroids and all that we put in our food, no wonder. We have to make exercising a regular thing. Exercising, you know, especially in other countries, is they're normally used to it. We're not. We need to take care of our health ourselves so we don't have to see the doctors. But private health care works. It's the best, and we need to keep that. Gotcha. So as we come to a wrap here, Sydney, um, I want to ask you this. So when are you going to run for office, man, so we can get all these things up there and ready? Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. Once I build <laughs> myself up, because I'm still building myself up, you need to build yourself up to be a man and the good man that's worthy of it. And right now, I'm not at that point. And by the way, on my last point, you know, we do need to do some things, you know, with our privatized health care because, you know, these these healthcare companies are charging mountains out of molehills for what they do. You can't, you know, just tell them, though, the price of it. That's bad. But there are ways to counteract it. I like that Trump was doing that. And we need to keep that going. But, you know, in regards to me running, it's going to come. I'm building myself up. It's hard to do so in the current times we live in where men are trained to be bitches, but I'm not letting that stop me and I'm not making any excuses. I want to build the best version of myself every day until I am worthy of being the leader of our country. All right. Um, any final thoughts you want to share out there for all the listeners and viewers, anything you want to leave them with? Cause we are on a stay in truth to yourself podcast. This is platform for all about how you staying true to yourself and your value. So what are some final things you would like to share um, as we kind of come to an end here? Our country is very great. People will struggle to get in here. Men need to be strong. We need to be capable. We're the men. We're the future of the country. We are the leaders of the country and men need to be men again. Women do a great role. I'm glad for all the mothers out there seek uh seek wifehood and seek motherhood do not seek fame and fortune do not seek to be out there in the workforce the way men are if you have to work you know work collectively but be with a man who can take care of you your job is to bear the next generation your job is to be a help me to your man and your job is to you know ultimately contribute men build society women help society when it comes to illegal immigrants, we need to get them out the hell out. We can't take care of them all. Get the hell out. You know, we need to start the deportation squads on day one when Trump returns to office. <laughs> we need to have guns pointed at them. We need to have a wall and a moat and electric fencing on it. When it comes to trade, you know, put tariffs on these Chinese imports. Drill, baby, drill. You know, take advantage of the great resources we have in America and make America in energy independent again. We need a strong military. We need, you know, not just men out there, but we need to invest and have our military having the best technology they can. I know we can do it. In regards to immigration also, you know, when it comes to the work visas, until every American tech employee in all these other fields have a job, do not give them a work visa. And when they do come in the country, they have to be contributing society members. They can't be dependent on, you know, government programs when they come in. Make America great again. America is such a great country. It kills me the destruction that we've had. You know, I love women, but they don't need to vote in a great society. Women haven't been voting in no, throughout most Sydney, of history. Don't. Dumb. Women haven't been, excuse me, you, you gave the floor to me. Women haven't been voting throughout most of history. <laughs> throughout most of history in America, women have not been voting. They had the right to vote for decades and they haven't done anything productive with it. They need to go back in the kitchen and and stay out of this, you know, evil. Before women were voting, we had peace. Now that women vote, we have chaos. Men are cutting their dicks off claiming to be women. You know, these are great times that we're living in. I'm glad to be alive right now, and I hope and pray for the future, and I hope to be a contributing member in the future to come. Awesome. Awesome, Sydney. Well, it's a pleasure to always have you on the platform um, and sharing your great perspective and engaging in this wonderful discourse. Um, any final questions you have for me or you want to leave out for the, for the audience out there? Anything? Anything else? Yeah, I hope you're having other people spread the truth the way I am. I hope you're not getting these people who will lie. 
I'll never forget, you know, that time I was at uh, Cliff's spot where he was trying to lie, <laughs> trying to talk about how women could be, how women were leading in Africa. <laughs> and I questioned him. I was like, okay, so when you get your girl, will you let her lead? He was like, uh, I mean, yeah, you call it out. He was like, Cliff, you lied out your ass. I hope that you're getting people who are <laughs> telling the truth. That was a long time ago, you. man. I so hope you're getting people who are telling the truth on your podcast, my friend. Oh, yes, definitely, man. It's a platform for people to come and share their perspective, their narr uh, narratives, and everything else. And we welcome all types of opinion. No discrimination <laughs> here. Um, and, uh, Sydney, it's a pleasure to always have you on here, man. And to all the listeners, everybody watching, this is the first, I think, the first one we've done in a while. I don't know. I think all the other videos have been taken down. Uh, we took them down and uh, kind of coming back up with some more. Um, so, yeah, go like, comment, subscribe, share it. And um, anybody interested, if you want to reach out to Sydney, reach out to him. Great, great conversations on different things. And um, as we always say on here, you pursue your dream and you seize the damn day. Peace uh -huh. out. Woo!